Good morning, potage for my friends in Brazil. I'm Sunil Kripalani. I work at Vanderbilt University Medical Center as a hospitalist. And I'd like to share with you some work that we've done to um, reduce the routine use of chest X-rays in the intensive care units. I'm presenting on behalf of my co-authors who are listed below, and I'll share with you results from a paper that's currently accepted for publication and in press at the Journal of Hospital Medicine. This is my home, uh, Nashville, Tennessee. I would, um, it's a wonderful city, and our medical center is a large referral hospital uh, that receives a lot of complex, critically ill patients from around this part of the country. We have a number of initiatives based on the Choosing Wisely campaign to reduce healthcare spending. Um, as you know, approximately 30% of um, spending in the United States is considered wasteful. And we've been working along with others um, to identify practices and reduce um, their excess use, also called de-implementation of low-value care. Um, at our medical center, we take a quality improvement approach and we also do research evaluations of these initiatives because in spite of a number of publications about the Choosing Wisely campaign, there's actually very limited published evidence about the effectiveness of interventions to reduce excess healthcare use. We also have very limited evidence about what strategies work best and in what context. We used in this study the implementation science principles. And implementation science is the study of how to incorporate evidence-based interventions into clinical practice. So what I'd like to present is an example of using implementation science approaches to study overuse of chest X-rays in our intensive care units. So for those working as practicing hospitalists and intensivists, you know that chest X-rays can be ordered on a routine basis, which is often daily. And some advantages of this is it's convenient. Uh, we don't have to think about ordering chest X-rays every day. And sometimes we find rare life-threatening situations like an unexpected pneumothorax or other problem like that. But the disadvantages are it costs money. Um, patients get a small amount of radiation exposure. It may be inconvenient, especially if patients are woken up early in the morning for their chest X-rays to be done. And they often need to be repositioned, which can put lines at risk. It may result in false positive workups. And sometimes there's low value um, in terms of the diagnosis or therapy changes. It's been shown previously that a strategy of on-demand chest X-ray ordering can reduce X-rays um, safely by uh, 32 to 45 percent. And therefore, several years ago, the Critical Care Society's Collaborative and the American College of Radiology recommended, instead of using a routine chest X-ray strategy, that we use an on-demand strategy. In other words, when it appears clinically indicated. So in this project, we had two objectives. One was to determine if an intervention with education and audit feedback effectively reduces chest X-ray ordering in two intensive care units at our hospital. We also studied what factors affect successful implementation. This initiative actually started in 2014. Our medical center um, has a committee which is led by our trainees, by our medical residents and students, which decide which initiatives to pursue as part of our Choosing Wisely strategy. They um, reviewed the literature about what evidence was available, uh, recruited peer champions, and they established a data reporting system, and designed an educational campaign. Um, in September of 2015, they met with the clinical staff in the intensive care units, including physicians and nurse practitioners, and then launched the initiative in October 2015. Throughout this process, stakeholders, including the attendings in the critical care units and the fellows and other staff provided feedback. So the evaluation of this initiative was a prospective study. It was not randomized. Uh, we had a baseline data collection period of 50 weeks, and the intervention period lasted 33 weeks. We submitted this to our institutional review board, 
which um, agreed this was a quality improvement study. We conducted this work in our medical intensive care unit, the MICU, and also the cardiovascular intensive care unit, the CVICU, at Vanderbilt University Medical Center. The participants affected by the intervention were all the nurses and staff working in those units, and this included a large group of people, physicians, surgeons, nurse practitioners, fellows, residents, medical students, and also the x-ray technicians. Our intervention had several components. Uh, one was education. So the leaders of this initiative developed a, an educational talk reviewing the evidence about chest x-rays and um, evidence showing that they could be reduced through an on-demand strategy. They presented this in a workshop format um, for the medical residents and nurse practitioners working in the unit. We also developed some flyers. Um, an example is shown here, which uh, was one page and had the key points about the Choosing Wisely initiative, the recommendation from the Critical Care Society's collaborative, and an estimate that uh, more than half of patients were receiving a chest X-ray daily in the ICU, and that um, many of these were not necessary. In each unit, we identified peer champions. So in the cardiovascular ICU, the main peer champions were nurse practitioners who work consistently in that unit. And that's their full-time job, is to provide care in that unit. In the medical intensive care unit, we identified three senior medical residents to serve as peer champions. And this is a group of residents that spend two weeks at a time in the intensive care unit but they also work in many other parts of the hospital, and this becomes important later. Um, our data um, collection system allowed us to collect weekly data on the performance of chest X-rays and provide that feedback to the providers working in those units, as well as compare one unit to the other. During the initial startup period of the intervention, we actually had two small um, plan, do, study, act cycles, PDSA cycles. And this was to make sure that the intervention and the feedback we were providing was incorporated into the decision-making process in the units. So one of the medical students working on this initiative attended rounds and rounded with the team for several days and observed the process of um, ordering chest x-rays. For example, he observed that many times the attending was making the decision and someone else was entering the order. And he talked with the peer champions in the unit, got feedback from the steering committee, and made a few small adjustments in how the intervention and the education was approached. Uh, but there were no major changes in the intervention. Now, one small change that was made, for example, is that um, initially, we did not have a specific goal in mind for how much um, we sh wanted to try to reduce the chest X-ray performance. But after talking with people, um, they said it would be helpful to have a goal, so we created a goal of reducing it by about 20%. Our data analysis had two parts. One was the quantitative evaluation, where we looked at the number of chest x-rays done per patient per day in each of these intensive care units. And first, we compared the average number of x-rays during the baseline period with the follow-up period using a simple Wilcoxon rank sum test. Then we looked at a trend in the data using interrupted time series analysis, and we performed segmented linear regression um, comparing the baseline and the follow-up period. Our qualitative evaluation included, as I mentioned, observing morning rounds and the decision-making process. We also conducted interviews with the physicians and other staff. And our qualitative evaluation was guided by the Consolidated Framework for Implementation Research, which is an, um, a model commonly used in implementation science. Just briefly, the Consolidated Framework for Implementation Research 
guides evaluations of initiatives by drawing attention to different parts of the intervention, the interventions involved, and how it interacts with the environment around it. So in our case, the individuals involved were the people ordering chest X-rays. And the process was the decision-making process and attempts to reduce chest X-rays through education, audit, and feedback. The inner setting was the culture of the intensive care units and the staffing patterns involved in those units. And in our evaluation, um, we didn't have any specific outer setting, um, but that would include things like national health care policy or reimbursement, um, which may affect the decision-making process. So what did we find? Um, in our quantitative results, and this slide shows the average number of chest X-rays per patient per day during the baseline period and during the intervention period. In, in the cardiovascular intensive care unit, on average, there was more than one chest X-ray per patient being done each day during the baseline period. And this went down during the intervention period, and this was statistically significant. In the medical ICU, we had two groups of teams. One was the physicians, the medical residents, and the other was nurse practitioners. And these nurse practitioners worked more consistently in the medical intensive care unit, uh, like their colleagues in the cardiovascular intensive care unit. And here we see the baseline rate of x-rays was quite a bit lower in the medical ICU. It did not change at all during the intervention. And for the nurse practitioner patients, the baseline rate was even lower and it also did not change. Now, now these data are based on having more than 3,000 baseline patients and more than 2,000 patients during the intervention period, and because this spanned for a little over uh, one year, actually about a year and a half. This graph illustrates the trends during the baseline and intervention period in the cardiovascular intensive care unit. So this is the unit where we saw a reduction in chest X-rays after the intervention was started. In the baseline period, you can see the rate is pretty stable, and it's more than one patient, more than one X-ray per patient per day. After starting the intervention, the rate dropped significantly. It had a slight trend upward, but that trend was not statistically significant. But the difference between the intervention and the baseline period was significant. In the medical intensive care unit, this graph shows the top solid line is for the physician teams led by medical residents, and the bottom dotted line is for the nurse practitioner teams, um, again, led by nurse practitioners who work consistently in that unit. And we can see there's really no difference between the baseline and intervention periods within these two groups. So our qualitative evaluation helped us understand why we saw differences um, between these two units. And what we found is that some major factors affecting the success of the intervention were um, the presence of the peer champions. So especially in the um, cardiovascular intensive care unit, the nurse practitioners who served as peer champions were very involved in the intervention, and they considered it their own. Um, and that was a bit different compared to the uh, medical resident unit. There were several barriers that came up. Um, I'll go into these in a little bit more detail on the other slide. Um, but one thing we noticed, for example, in the cardiovascular intensive care unit is that during the course of the intervention, um, even though it started out successfully, a couple of physicians became concerned that this approach was not appropriate for certain high-risk surgical patients, like those who had gotten a transplant or had a left ventricular assist device. So we actually had to make a couple modifications. Um, Let's look at this um, qualitative evaluation using the framework. So as I showed on that previous figure, um, there are different components of the consolidated framework for implementation research. One is about the intervention. And so in the cardiovascular intensive care unit, um, the people working in that unit really felt like the intervention was theirs. They participated in developing it and deploying it in their unit. Whereas in the medical intensive care unit, they really saw it as an external intervention, like another group coming in and trying to change practice. And the resident said, you know, we don't really need to worry about this choosing wisely stuff in the intensive care unit. 
Um, we're more concerned with the life and death decisions that are being made. And that was an interesting point that they made and shows how they received the intervention. Um, in both units, the attendings actually guided a lot of the ordering. Um, one difference is that, as I mentioned, in the medical intensive care unit, the residents were rotating through every two weeks. So they felt less ownership over quality in that unit compared to the teams that were consistently working in the unit, which was the nurse practitioners. Um, we felt that the climate was a little bit more receptive to change in the cardiovascular intensive care unit. Um, whereas in the medical intensive care unit, while the nurse practitioners who worked there were excited about it, the residents were you know, expressing some fatigue and didn't feel like they had the additional time to take on a quality improvement initiative during that two week rotation. And um, I mentioned also that the sense of ownership and leadership in the units was different. Um, in the medical intensive care unit, although they got weekly email feedbacks, the champions did not um, continue to work in that unit all the time. They rotated in and out of the unit. So they weren't there all the time. And the amount of feedback they were able to provide was less than in the cardiovascular intensive care unit. We estimated the savings and cost of this initiative. And just briefly, we estimated it cost about $1,600 to develop the intervention, um, the materials, including the flyers, and to track the chest X-ray rates using a dashboard. And in the cardiovascular unit where the X-ray performance went down, we estimated that we saved about 51 chest X-rays per month. And if we use a cost of $23 to $50 per chest X-ray, these are based on different rates of reimbursement according to different insurers in the United States, that the intervention would save about $12,000 to $29,000 in the first year. Now, there were some limitations. This was done at a single hospital in two intensive care units. We tried to identify a concurrent control group, but we were unable to set up the tracking process in another ICU um, that did not receive the intervention at the same time. So we had to use an historical control. And we did not actually track the reasons why the chest X-rays were ordered. We simply looked at the number of chest X-rays ordered. So we did not differentiate, for example, between patients on mechanical ventilation or those who were not ventilated. We did not look at whether the chest X-ray was done after the placement of a line or a chest tube. Um, there is some question about sustainability. So we evaluated the intervention um, for more than six months and going on nine months. But we noticed that the rate started to increase a little bit after six months. So we're not sure how long this um, effect can be sustained without continued education. So we found overall that the intervention was effective in one unit um, and that using this structured framework to do a qualitative assessment was really helpful for understanding the different role of peer champions in the units um, related to ownership of the initiative and help us understand some of the barriers which may come up in other initiatives like addressing resident fatigue, uh, competing priorities, and rotating staff. So I want to thank you very much for the opportunity to present.